Can we open our Bibles to the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 8? Song of Solomon 8, 4. Are we there? I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. We bless the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Father, we thank you even for this message. Let's lift our hands. We are praying, O Lord, as I speak to girls, all over the world, girls that are watching me right now, O oh Lord, by telecast, O oh Lord, O oh Father, I pray for them that you release them to another level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of knowledge. Thank you, Papa. May we say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. What I'm going to teach you today, I know I have taught some of the things but I'm going to teach them in a depth because I've realized sometimes when I say don't do this, don't do that, you might not understand me. Uh, if I don't give you the reasons why you must not do what I tell you not to do. So the title of my message today, is, it's called A Charge to the Daughters of Jerusalem. A Charge to the Daughters of Jerusalem. You are the Daughters of Jerusalem. These are born again daughters. Hallelujah. When the Bible is saying daughters of Jerusalem, we are not talking of daughters out there in Jericho. Daughters out there in Samaria. God is talking about daughters in Jerusalem. These are children of God. Girls who are children of God. Who are fellowshipping with Christ. Hallelujah. So what I'm giving, it is to the daughters of Jerusalem. Uh, who are washed by the blood of Jesus. I'm not just talking to any daughter, because they are daughters of the devil. Hallelujah. But you are not that. You you are daughters of Jerusalem. So you are daughters of peace. Jerusalem, the house of peace, the house of God. So I want to touch your lives, because even the Bible, he has got something to say to the daughters of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So I will start with number one. Uh, the same verse which we have just read, can you write this, that uh, do not stir up or awaken love until it pleases. That's number one. Daughters of Jerusalem, girls in the girls' fellowship, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. Pleases. Now I want you to understand something. Love is as strong as death. I know right now in the world we have got a lot of girls who are just entering uh, into relationships, love relationships. And they don't actually understand how powerful love is. Love is too powerful. More than what you can think. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous thing to just enter into love when you are not yet ready. People are marrying these days. And divorcing very quickly. They marry quickly, divorce quickly. Why? Because they are just entering into love. And a lot of young girls are just getting into love because everybody is doing it. But I want you to know that um, uh, when you are not yet ready to marry, don't get into love issues. Finish your school. Amen. Hallelujah, girls. Amen. Because I'm speaking to you as a father. Hallelujah. Go to school, go to college, work, earn a living. 
Do something for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you are proud of yourself at the end of the day. Amen. Do something to please your parents. To please your father, your mother if they are alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Do something also to please us, mama and the prophet. Amen. The prophetess and the prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. Because love is too powerful. Can you write that, Mary, when you are now physically, comma, spiritually, and emotionally mature? Mary, when you are now physically, spiritually, and emotionally mature. When you read that same chapter of Song of Solomon, chapter 8, Verse 8, it says, we have got a little sister. Can you tell the person next say we have a little sister? And she has no breast. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she is spoken for? God is trying to say that she is not yet mature for marriage. A girl who has no breast is not yet mature for marriage. So the Bible is saying she has no breast. What shall we do for our sister? This is a girl in the house of God in the day when she's spoken for. Because what God is talking about is not physical breast. He is talking of physical maturity. Are you mature enough for marriage? Or do you think you are? Because I can see by responsibility. Some of you, if I give you $1,000, you buy 1,000 bananas. <laughs> you are not yet mature enough. Hallelujah. So it's very, very important for you to be ready first. Amen. Don't look at other girls even at church when you are seeing them maybe doing issues of boyfriend. You relax. Amen. Because do you know that these relationships, they destroy your souls. Amen. They destroy your heart. Because you are doing these things which are so important before the time. And now when you, when you are entering into relationship, love relationship, you break. You enter another one, you break. Do you know you are killing your soul? And you are doing a big disadvantage or a disfavor to the real man, the real brother that shall marry you. Because there is your husband somewhere. And now you will get a little paper. That has been tossed around by a lot of boys. You have given your heart to different men, different boys. And some of you, you think, I'm just in love, prophet. No, you are actually giving your soul. You are giving your, the portions of your heart. God wants you to be married with a whole heart. Amen. Not a heart that was given to Jonathan, David, and Jonah. <laughs> Everyone is your heart everywhere. Chimani, mani, chipinge, cholocho, they all got you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let sleeping dogs lie. Go to school. Don't destroy your heart. Don't destroy your soul. Look for a job. Earn your own money. Amen. Buy your own car. Amen. Drive before you get married. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't marry because somebody has a car. You know, that type of marrying is an old type of marrying. You know, those type where our mothers used to marry somebody because he is a car and they were coming from the rural area. Not these days. Cars are everywhere. Buy one for yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Can I charge daughters of Jerusalem? Yeah. With the word of God, I prophesy, drive your own vehicle. Yeah. Get your own driver's license. Yeah. And drive your own car in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We are tired of girls that are praying for a boy with a car. Amen. I now want girls who pray and say, Lord, I want to be married when I'm driving my own car. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Rachel, when you read, even Rebecca, all of them, they married when they were now mature. Hallelujah. If you read Genesis 24, let's go there. Let me show you something. Genesis 24, verse 14. 
Now it, let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink and I will, give, I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your master's servant, for your, for your servant Isaac. And by this I, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. The, the servant is praying that, Lord, I want a girl for Isaac, for my master's son, because he had been sent to look for a girl for Isaac to marry. And Eliasa is making a prayer to God that I want one who is mature enough when I ask her for a drink, she must not only give me a drink, but she must also have responsibility to water the camels. And it's not a joke to water camels because the camels, they take an industrious girl, not a lazy one. Because one camel can drink even three gallons of water. And some, they say sometimes six gallons of water. So not some of the lazy girls that I see today who wants to get married at their house. The room <laughs> is undone. It's full of dirt. Your clothes are dropped everywhere. It's like coming out of a room of a six-year-old girl. You can't even put your shoes in order. Yet you want to be married. Your own shoes, and you are talking of a husband. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Some of you, even you came, you are dressed today, but you are not the one who ironed those clothes. <laughs> you can't even iron your own clothes, yet you want a husband. Say, Lord, help me. The Bible in verse 19, it says, well, let's start verse 18. So she said, drink, my Lord. Then she quickly let a pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also. And until they finished drinking, a camel is a big stomach. Then she quickly emit, emptied her pitcher into the trough ran back to the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. All of them. She made sure they were watered. This is being responsible and immature emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Hallelujah. Now, if you read again, all right, let me just conclude on this scripture with the song, Song of Solomon uh, 8, Song of Solomon 8, verse 6. Do you know that love is as strong as death? Some of you girls, you just enter into these love relationships. You don't know what you are doing to yourself. Let's read verse 6. Okay. It says, Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death, jealous as cruel as the grave, its flames as the flames of fire, a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. If a man would give for love all the wealth of his house, it would be utterly despised. Love is as strong as death. What the Bible is saying when it says, do not awaken love until it pleases. It's saying, do not awaken love until you are ready to be married. Why? Because you destroy yourself because love is very strong. It needs to be awakened in time and in juices. In the Bible, it says there is a time that is beautiful for everything. Not everything is beautiful at any time. You must know the right time to be married. When you see other girls even in the church celebrating their weddings, you, if you are not yet ready, just celebrate with them but remain calm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. It, it, the research that I did, most suicide cases or of suicide victims are actually love victims. 
Most suicidal cases, suicide cases that are recorded in homicide in police stations all over the world, they have to do with love. Because many people awaken love before it pleases. And when they are heartbroken, that's when they commit suicide. Because it's too strong. You need to be emotionally mature. You need to be spiritually mature. You need to be physically mature. Now look at me, all you girls that are here, my daughters. Some of you, you have entered relationships. But why are you here in this girls' fellowship? Why were you not married? Huh? If you were mature, why are you here? Because you might look like I'm talking to someone out there. I'm talking about you. That even that man so that you are not yet immature, em emotionally mature. Even physically mature. How do you see that a girl is now physically mature when she's able to say no to sex before marriage? But weak little girls, they just say yes to anything because they don't think. Hmm? That's why even the government is saying, no, we cannot allow girls to be married even at 16 now. Why? Because they are just saying yes, but they don't know what they are saying yes to. Hmm? These films that you are watching these days are lying to you so much. When you see someone kissing on a soap, you think you can also do it. <laughs> and you just go and do it. You have done it, but what has it given you? Hello? Hmm? You have studied books of about romance. <laughs> Muse and Boone, you know about romantic things. <laughs> but now can I ask you a question? What does that romantic knowledge give you? How many boyfriends did you have? 17 times 5. <laughs> and nothing has happened. You are not yet ready. Pray for God. Amen. To bless you so that you are emotionally mature spiritually mature, and physically mature. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, Lord, bless me today. Amen.